So Moonlighter came out of nowhere for me. It apparently came out way back in May of 2018 and it managed to go completely under my radar. So that might be the case for you as well. But it's been getting some love again lately as it's been going on sale quite frequently and it just celebrated its first anniversary. It topped the Steam charts for a while and had some pretty good reviews attached to it. After watching the teaser video, you can pretty much tell that the game has an incredibly unique style and I could more than likely sink 30 plus hours into it. Seeing as how I snagged it for only $10, I figured I'll probably get my money's worth, so I took the plunge. And you know what? I wasn't wrong. I'm gonna go ahead and spoil the entire video right now. Moonlighter is epic. It surprised me with how incredibly atmospheric it was, really. The world is absolutely charming, there's so many things to discover, the music is amazing, and the feeling of setting out on a new adventure every day is addicting, really. Yet they've still made it just as exciting to return home. Moonlighter knows exactly what it's trying to be, and I'd say it did a damn good job of doing that. For all those reasons and more, I cannot recommend this game enough. Before we get into the nitty gritty details about Moonlighter, I think it's important to mention first that the game is really meant to be played with a controller. If you're on PC and don't have a usable controller, just note that the key bindings are quite unfortunate, at least in my opinion. After finishing the game, I'd say Moonlighter plays best on Switch for what it's trying to be. Now if you're like me, you'll want to know more about this game before throwing any money at it, which is fine, nothing wrong with that, right? Then that brings up the question though, what do you do in Moonlighter? Well, Moonlighter has three main gameplay pillars, exploring the dungeons, selling your artifacts, and enhancing your towns. If you haven't already figured it out, in Moonlighter, you're a merchant. Your day-to-day -day life consists of delving into dungeons, uncovering its mysteries, and finding the most valuable loot you can. Bringing it home to sell in your shop, upgrading your gear, store, and town, all while bringing life back to Moonlighter. Simple, right? Well, maybe not so much. Each one of these pillars has a plethora of mechanics that really put Moonlighter in a class of its own and contribute to the amazing atmosphere that it has. If you're still not convinced, then let's dig into it and talk about what you'll be spending most of your time doing, exploring the dungeons. About 70% of your time in Moonlighter will probably be spent delving into the dungeons, and the dungeons are incredibly fun because they have so much variety to them. You'll find a variety of monsters, each with their own attack styles, patterns, and difficulty, but it doesn't stop there. The dungeons are actually randomly generated, and they generate many different rooms, each with their own challenge. Some rooms are filled with junk, while others have floor tiles that will fall out beneath you, and some rooms are just traps entirely where you'll need to kill all the enemies before moving on. You can find some rooms filled with lore for a bit of backstory, and there are plenty of secrets to be discovered along the way. As you fight your way through, you'll run into mini-bosses who will see if you have what it takes, but more importantly, it's the guardians at the end who will test your metal to see if you're ready to move on to the next dungeon. That being said, the dungeons are pretty short. When you first start Moonlighter, it'll take some time to get up to speed, but once you get into the groove of things, you'll be speeding through them. Seeing as how there are only five dungeons, each with three floors and the Guardian at the end, the game boils down to a more of rinse and repeat process. Get in, grab the loot, maybe defeat the boss, get out, sell your gear, upgrade your gear, and repeat to progress further. Don't be fooled though, while they can be short, they are also very difficult, so unless you're a god, the only way to get through a dungeon is to go in day after day, learning the monster's mechanics and making money for better gear. That being said, finding new enemies and learning those mechanics is really where this game shines and it's what I personally had the most fun doing. As you can probably tell, loot will be very important to how you play the game, and Moonlighter has one of the best inventories I have ever seen to help you manage that. There is essentially a minigame of sorts inside your inventory which affects the loot you have. You'll find the normal loot, and you'll find variants of that loot which have enchantments on it. Those enchantments affect an item in a random tile adjacent to it, and the enchantments vary greatly. You can destroy an item in an adjacent tile, or you can send it home without even leaving the dungeon. Some enchantments must be placed on certain sides of your inventory, while others will just break if you take too much damage. It's actually incredibly fun to manage these items to be able to make it out with the most profit possible. And for you fellow hoarders, fear not, because you'll eventually unlock an item that will destroy junk items and transfer them to gold for you on the spot. It's a good feeling knowing that you're not leaving any items behind, that everything has some kind of value to you. There are plenty more to be discovered in the dungeons and even some mysteries I couldn't solve, but as I'll always say, the magic of the game is discovering these things for yourself, and Moonlighter has plenty to be discovered. It's pretty ironic that I spoil some of the game for you after touting discovering things for yourself, but hey, not everybody cares about finding these things out on their own. That being said, I won't be telling you the majority of stuff that's better to experience on your own, so no worries there. So, you've made it out of the dungeon, what's next? Well, if you took long enough, it's likely nighttime now, at which point you can sleep in your bed and start a new day. Here's where selling hordes of your loot comes into play. In your shop, you get a limited number of shelves which you can place items on that you're ready to sell and set their price. You'll have a book which gives you the basic idea what you should be selling items at, but it's up to you to raise or lower the price so that you make the most money while your customers are happy. 
This is where I would say the game becomes extremely casual so that you can sit back, relax, and sell your goods. But personally, I'm not too happy with how they handled some of these mechanics. Customers have five reactions based on what you price an item at. I call them super happy, to happy, to reluctant, to unhappy, to angry. These reactions have small mechanics that affect your shop's reputation, but as far as I can tell, your reputation isn't even a tangible thing in this game. There's no reward or no repercussion to selling high or low, so basically reputation isn't even a thing. Which means all you have to do is keep selling an item in its reluctant zone so you can sell those items at the highest amount possible. I'm assuming reputation was meant to be a feature that would influence the customers for your shop, such as selling low would make customers happy, bringing in more customers and maybe uh, customers who would buy more or higher price stuff, while selling low would bring in fewer customers and would, you know, they'd spend less and you also bring in more thieves that way. Without reputation, the casual playstyle does suit this game, but those looking for a challenge or wanting a mechanic that'll test them, struggling to make the most of what they've got, it's not here. You can change the difficulty of Moonlighter, but it says it only affects the combat. Once you've completed the game, you'll unlock New Game Plus. And while New Game Plus offers new weapons and even jewelry for extra benefits, the wiki says it otherwise just raises the value of everything by 5, meaning that none of the mechanics actually change, it just takes longer to purchase the things you need. If that's true, then that is seriously disappointing. I've played a bit of New Game Plus and can safely say I wasn't very impressed. I managed to beat the entire first dungeon within 10 minutes of starting New Game Plus, because at this point I'm accustomed to how the game works, and I still have my armor and weapons from the previous playthrough, so I don't really see a point in raising the prices of items so high if they aren't even necessary to get through the new New Game Plus. Now I only played the first dungeon and stopped after that. I could be wrong and it could have new mechanics hidden farther in, but at this point I've got my money's worth so I'm fine just putting it down here. If you've played farther in and found something worth mentioning, go ahead and let me know. Otherwise, the only thing that I could think of that would keep me interested in playing or bringing me back is if the New Game Plus kept scaling to, let's say, Infinity, so that every time I beat the New Game, let's say New Game Plus Plus would get harder and harder. I rambled a bit there, but there's plenty more mechanics your shop has to offer. You'll find adventurers who will only buy weapons or armor, there's even rich town folks who will buy at higher prices, and you'll even encounter a few thieves along the way, but if you're quick enough, you'll be able to stop them before they steal your goods. One of the funner mechanics that I completely missed until I was in Endgame was that after upgrading your shop to a certain point, you can begin accepting quests from the villagers, and they'll have you go slay a certain amount of monsters or gather some items for what would be better prices. While the shop lacks a bit of risk versus reward, it's still a very enjoyable experience. The habit I got into was hoarding loot for days until I filled my storage chests, and then I selling it all in one go so I could make more money to play with at once. It's pretty relaxing after grinding the dungeons for days to just sit back and watch it all turn into money. Now that you've got all this money, where does it go? Well, that's up to you, really. There's plenty of places for you to sink your money into. It really comes down to what's important to you. You can start by paying for others to settle down in your town and open up shop, like the blacksmith or alchemist. Once settled, you can buy upgrades from them, like better armor or potions and enchantments. You'll be throwing away a lot of your money at them all the time to make it further into the dungeon, but beyond that, you can still upgrade your shop as well. You can buy smaller perks for your shop, like effects of your customers will tip better, or when you sleep in your bed you get armor for being well rested. You can also upgrade the look of your shop entirely, giving you more shelves to sell items on and eventually unlocking an assistant to help you. Over time and after you've invested enough money into your town here or there, you'll unlock plenty of other things to bring your town to life. A banker will go ahead and gamble all your money away, and a collector holds every item you've ever seen, so if you're missing an item for a year upgrade, you can buy it from him for crazy high prices. The blacksmith has a variety of weapons that you can buy over time and collect to play around with and see what's best for you. I actually ran with the spear and bow combo myself. There's a guy who sells items you can place in your shop for extra effects, and there's even a pet pen for some of the monsters you've seen, though it doesn't really do much. One of the cooler features is that the farther you are into the game and the more dungeons you've unlocked means the more and more people that will come to town. Soon enough you'll notice there are tons of people everywhere just all decked out in insane gear and your shop will even get more rich people and thieves, so be careful about that. I honestly had such a great time with this game. I loved the atmosphere, the world they created was beautiful, and the music was mind-numbingly awesome. Discovering and learning about the creatures, the dungeons, and the mysteries they all had to offer was quite the ride, and I'm sure you'll enjoy it just as much as I did. It ended up taking me about 15 hours to complete Moonlighter, and with the new game mode plus, I was right on the mark with saying you could easily sink 30 hours into Moonlighter. This game was epic, it was cheap, and it was a must-play in my book. So go ahead and give it some love and enjoy the ride. If you have any questions or want to debate anything I've said, hit me up in the comments and I'll respond as quick as I can. Other than that, I'm JT, and thanks for watching.